Hello everyone, welcome all of you to this lecture where we will be discussing the surgical anatomy of thyroid gland and various triangles which we need to know to perform thyroidectomy operations. Now in the next video we will be discussing various kinds of thyroid malignancies, their surgical approach and the histopathological features of main important thyroid malignancies like papillary thyroid carcinoma anaplastic medullary thyroid carcinoma as well as follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma of the thyroid gland okay so now in this video we'll be discussing the part which is required here here the thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped gland and this is this gland is having two lobes see this one is one lobe this is one lobe so two lobes and the lobes are connected by isthmus okay now each lobe is having upper pole of the thyroid and lower pole of the thyroid okay so two lobes are there this is one lobe and this one is one lobe each lobe is having two pole and these two lobes are connected by connecting isthmus this is what you have to know the arterial supply we have two arteries which are important number one is external thyroid sorry we have superior thyroid artery which is direct branch of external carotid artery and we have discussed in our lfd episodes where that external carotid artery the first branch is superior thyroid artery okay superior thyroid artery is the first branch of external carotid artery okay remember just watch that module there we have discussed like this superior thyroid artery is the first branch of the external carotid artery and the branches that are coming from the carotid artery at the level of neck are from the external carotid not from the internal carotid internal carotid do not give it does not give any branches at the level of neck so by that we can differentiate next artery is inferior thyroid artery now inferior thyroid artery is not a branch of external carotid artery it is a branch of thyro cervical trunk now what is this thyro cervical trunk this thyro cervical trunk is actually a branch of subclavian artery is a branch of subclavian artery are you understanding now the arterial branches i have discussed in lfd1 episode so please go and watch that now subclavian artery right side may it is a branch of brachiocephalic trunk left side may it is directly from the arch of outer we have also discussed just i am showing this thing here okay you can see here we have discussed this is the arch of outer and here brachiocephalic trunk ka ek division right subclavian but directly from the arch of outer you have left subclavian i have discussed this in lfd one episode probably okay so let us now concentrate here we have something that is known as thyroidia ema artery or arteria thyroidi ema sometime it is present if present it is supplying the isthmus of the thyroid gland but it is a direct branch from the arch of aorta so we have three arteries superior thyroid from the external carotid artery we have inferior thyroid which is directly from the thyro cervical trunk of the brachios of the subclavian artery okay and thyroid artery ema or ema artery that is from the arch of aorta directly okay from the arch of aorta understanding now as i told you the superior thyroid artery is going to supply the upper pole we have two lobe so two lobe each lobe the upper pole and middle portion will be supplied by superior thyroid artery the isthmus is basically supplied by ema artery inferior thyroid artery it is going to supply the lower portion lower portion of lower pole and isthmus inferior thyroid artery but what i want you to remember is that this inferior thyroid artery is coming and supplying the thyroid gland like this is not the only thing here you can see that both the superior as well as inferior parathyroid glands are also supplied by inferior thyroid artery so by chance during thyroidectomy operations if we cut the inferior thyroid artery here what will happen this will lead to 
hypoparathyroidism now coming into the venous drainage of the thyroid gland we have two main veins one is superior thyroid vein another is inferior thyroid vein superior thyroid vein as you can see it is draining the upper pole and middle portion and directly into the internal jugular vein okay if you see that inferior thyroid vein is also draining to the brachiocephalic vein but sometime in 30 percent patients what have is the middle thyroid vein and this is if present is very important because in thyroidectomy operations it is the first vein to be ligated it is the first vein that to be ligated in the thyroidectomy operation okay now you see this middle thyroid vein is also draining into internal jugular uh, vein now coming into the nerve supply of the thyroid gland before i'm going to the nerve supply just focus on the vagus nerve here you can follow the vagus nerve what the vagus nerve is doing see here is this trunk of the vagus nerve the main uh, this vagus nerve is coming and divided into this one and this one so it is giving superior laryngeal nerve so it is giving superior laryngeal nerve okay and the the main stem of the vagus nerve is going like that downward downward which is giving another branch that is known as the recurrent laryngeal nerve that is giving recurrent laryngeal nerve understanding so now then the vagus nerve continues down okay it will form anterior and posterior uh, that is different uh, at the level of stomach superior laryngeal nerve is coming like that and this superior laryngeal nerve is divided into external branch and the internal branch so you can see this external branch is going down like this this is the internal branch which is piercing through the what is this membrane this membrane is attaching the thyroid to hyoid so it is thyrohyoid membrane internal laryngeal nerve it is a branch of superior laryngeal which is piercing the thyrohyoid membrane and going inside okay then the external branch which is actually there this external branch is coming along the superior thyroid artery so are you understanding this is what i am now teaching you this is the superior thyroid artery which is coming okay and this is the superior laryngeal nerve uska ek division that is the external laryngeal nerve which will be coming along the course of uh, superior thyroid artery and that's why while ligating the superior thyroid artery we have to be very cautious okay because there you have to remember a c c a that is away close close away that means away to the gland it is close to the nerve okay close to the gland it is away from the nerve okay so away from the gland you can remember it uh, anyway away from gland is close to the nerve or close to the gland away from away from the nerve what does that mean you can remember it like that so if this is your thyroid gland okay now here you have the superior thyroid artery is coming like this it is supplying the superior thyroid artery away from the gland close to the nerve that means if i have to draw the nerve you have to remember away from the gland so this is near to the gland away from the gland is close to the nerve and like this so if i just say they are away from each other but close to the gland they are close to each other but away from the gland so this is what is acca okay that is away from each other close to the gland close to each other away from the gland if you do not understand so please again watch it so this is what you have to remember this internal laryngeal pierces the thyrohyoid membrane and goes inside and supply the sensory supply to the upper part of the larynx above the vocal cord okay because below the vocal cord the sensory supply will be like this this is going this recurrent laryngeal nerve will be supplying the sense will be taking the sensations from the lower half of the larynx from below the vocal cord okay so again i am just giving a view of nerve because it is very important you will be understanding it also in the ent larynx lecture so see very carefully you have to be pakka here so vagus nerve is coming and this vagus nerve is giving one branch this vagus nerve is giving let me take another color so this vagus nerve is coming first it is giving superior laryngeal nerve this superior laryngeal nerve giving external branch that is external laryngeal and giving internal laryngeal which pierces through the thyrohyoid membrane and taking the sensory supply of the upper part of the uh, vocal cord in the larynx and the external laryngeal nerve is actually coming like that this external laryngeal is following which artery it is following you can remember you can see this is this is i am drawing in red this one is coming coming following the superior thyroid artery can you appreciate that's why i told you close to the gland they were away from each other 
and away from the gland they are close to each other so remember a c c a that's why whenever we have to ligate the extra superior thyroid artery where should we ligate it we should ligate them when they are away from each other and when they are away from each other close to the gland they are away from each other so close to the gland i have to ligate the superior thyroid artery okay while doing thyroidectomy okay understood yeah now you can see here that the vagus nerve is coming coming and it is giving another branch which is winding around the subclavian artery on the right side which is winding around the arch of aorta on the left side you have to be remembering the course of recurrent laryngeal nerve is longest in left side than that of the right side okay that is important this was a question asked previously so i think the nerve uh, supply is uh, now okay the course of the nerve is okay so i told you you have to ligate it uh, close to the gland okay now what about the inferior thyroid artery ligation please remember that inferior thyroid artery gives many capsular branches okay so what you have to do you have to selectively ligate those capsular branches okay near the gland okay the ligation of the capsular branches close to the gland you have to ligate those if you are not ligating close to the gland then you will end up ligating here that means you have to compromise the parathyroid glands also so to prevent hypoparathyroidism to prevent the devascularization of the parathyroid gland i have to ligate specifically to the capsular branches of the uh, of the inferior thyroid artery understood so ligation me तीन क्वेश्चन हो गया थ्री क्वेश्चन वन सुपीरियर थायरॉयड आर्टरी बोलो इनफीरियर थायरॉयड आर्टरी वी हैव टू लाइक इट नियर टू द ग्लैंड दिस आर द टू क्वेश्चन एंड अदर आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू की दिस इज द मिडिल थायरॉयड वेन विच हैव टू बी लाइक इट जस्ट टू बी लाइक इटेड फर्स्ट ड्यूरिंग थायरॉयड एक्टमी एंड दिस इज द कोर्स ऑफ द नर्व नाउ हेयर जस्ट टू पॉइंट एक्सटर्नल लैरिंजियल नर्व is something that is going to supply only one intrinsic muscle of the thyroid that too is a tensor of the thyroid okay what is that crico thyroid crico thyroid so crico thyroid please remember is a tensor of the vocal cord and that is supplied by external laryngeal nerve okay this used to speak at high pitch like used by singer teachers okay those uh that is external laryngeal nerve what you have to be knowing so the course and the supply recurrent laryngeal nerve two questions here i told you left course is more than right course and i just explained why that in 2% of cases you might be having a non recurrent laryngeal nerve that means this non recurrent laryngeal nerve means that is not winding around arch of aorta or subclavian basically it is seen on the right side that means it is not winding around the subclavian artery in 2% of cases you might be having this non recurrent laryngeal nerve also recurrent laryngeal nerve supply the sensation so sensory below vocal cord sensory below vocal cord in larynx it is supplying sensory below vocal cord and all intrinsic muscles all intrinsic muscles except obviously cricothyroid just summarizing super the vagus nerve which is giving superior laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve the superior laryngeal nerve is giving internal laryngeal nerve and external laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve is that way internal laryngeal is supplies the sensations above the vocal cord in larynx external laryngeal nerve is supplying the cricothyroid only which is the tensor the recurrent laryngeal nerve is supplies sensation it takes up the sensations below the vocal cord in larynx and also having the motor supply to all the intrinsic muscle of the larynx except this cricothyroid understood this is as a whole in nutshell you have to be knowing this nerve supply now coming into a few more things that you have to be knowing is common site of injury of this recurrent laryngeal nerve if you see this image this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is moving up 
and you can see this nerve is passing behind some ligament this is what is known as Berry's ligament what is Berry's ligament Berry's ligament is nothing but it is a condensation of the pretracheal fascia it is condensation of the pretracheal fascia it is condensation of the pretracheal fascia and this Berry's ligament where it is the most common site for injury of the recurrent laryngeal nerve during surgery okay so to identify this recurrent laryngeal nerve during surgery we have many triangles that we are going to discuss like we have recurrent uh, triangle for recurrent laryngeal nerve we have uh, beard's triangle we have simon's triangle many triangles are there we'll be learning them in the next module okay so this is what is berry's ligament you can also see here this is berry's ligament okay and the recurrent laryngeal nerve is going just behind the uh, behind this berry's ligament okay